Do you ever go to adjust your chair and it goes... If you do have a couch where the headrest is making that noise, we can take the back off. This is just usually held on with Velcro. Here's your power connection. So if we lift up on this tab on either side of the couch, we can lift the couch up, the back of the couch will come up this way and we will remove the whole back of the couch. So I can't do that with one hand, so I'm gonna to have to let you go for a minute and we'll be right back. So here's the, the hinges on either side and here's the mechanism and how it works. Basically you're lifting, you're lifting up on this and that releases a catch. It catches on the, the holes here and then you can lift the back of the couch off. Once the back of the couch is off, you can see that there's a motor here and the mechanism inside is damaged. We can take all of this off and you're not gonna see it partially because it's on the back of the couch, but also because once you put that down, it covers it again. But we're gonna take this off in such a way that uh, we can reach in, make the repairs. Um, most of this will still be here and intact. So here's the back of the one that we've just disconnected that we have to repair. So you want to make sure you're not going to be cutting through anything else. And you can kind of see this material is so thin you can kind of see through it. So you want to, I find a spot close to the top here. If you wanted to, like I said, you could remove staples, pull it back and then restaple it. But uh, we're just going to cut it. And that gives me an opening so I can reach in and fix what I need to fix. So we have a, a pin right here. We're going to remove this pin and pull this pin out. So first we have to remove that holding a different kind of pin. We have to remove that piece and then the pin will slide out and there's another one on the bottom I believe. So let's do that. Here's the pin that we removed. So to take it off, we rotate it and slides out. And to put it back together, you just put the pin in there and it rotates into position. So once the two pins are pulled out, we can pull out this uh, mechanism with the motor. It, uh, come up and out. We'll have to just uh, feed the cable. The cable comes through over here. I might remove one staple or something just to get that to slide in there a little bit better. But basically we're just taking this motor assembly out and we can see that it's broken. And I'll show you how I fix that. So when you do have the actuator out you'll notice that this turns. You don't want to turn it though. If you turn it, um, you can change where the start and stop position is. So leave it where it is. Maybe even uh, put a scratch in the side here in case you do turn it. As you turn this, if you were to turn it, it's going to slowly either go in or come out because this is like a threaded on a threaded rod. So as you turn it, it's going to go in or out. And you could unscrew it a whole bunch and get it come all the way out and then you won't have the full the full motion. It may actually push you try to push your headrest up too high or pull it in too far. So you want to leave that where it is, don't turn it. Um, if you do turn it, we can always pull the pin again, turn it all the way, and then put the pin back in. But I'll show you how we can test that. And you can see how it's stopping a little bit shy of its true home position. So then we just need to turn this in a little bit more. 
And as I turn this, you can see it's getting a little bit closer, a little bit closer. Until it's about right. I think it was right there. So now when we do the act, hit the buttons to activate it, it shuts off right there. That's about where it was. What you need to find is a small piece of pipe that will fit over the end of this. Now, in my shop, I found several pieces of pipe that are potentials. This is some, some conduit for electric, running electrical wire. It's just plastic. So yeah, you can find something as long as it fits over top of this. This will not fit. The inside diameter of this is not quite right, but I'll show you how you can fix that if this is all you can find. I also found in my garage, I found a piece of metal pipe. And this slides over it nicely. But the thing that I don't like about this is this is a really thin uh, steel. It's I'm thinking this would probably eventually break too because there's going to be a lot of stress. Uh, the, there's a piece that fits in here. The piece that fits in there, it fits tighter than this, but it fits in there like this. And as the actuator goes up and down, it's supposed to just go up and down with it. But what happens is there's a little bit of twisting this way and eventually it twists enough that it breaks the sides out of this. And so you need something that's going to be strong enough to hold that. And I think that steel is... It's pretty thin steel. This plastic, I know I used it on one of, on my other chair. Uh, this works nice, but like I said, it's not the right size. I also found three quarter inch copper tubing, and that fits pretty good. So that fits. It's a little bit loose. Tighter the better, uh, but you want to be able to put this on and then slide it down and then put the pin in. So you need to. You don't want it too tight that you're fighting with it because you're inside your chair. And uh, what I've done is I've taken a piece of that um, electrical conduit and I've made it a little bit uh, bigger on the inside. So now that'll fit over top. So I could use this too. This is decently tight. And the way I did that was I took one of these step drills. Take the step drill and just drill it inside. You have to do it a few times, but you get the point. You see, see how it happens. And then now this will fit. Well, it'll fit as far as I drilled it anyways. So yeah, that's one option. I like the plastic. It's uh, pretty rugged. It, it can withstand a lot of sideways pressure and it's not going to break too easily. I know because, like I said, I've already done, done it once. Once you've chosen what you're going to use to put on here, so I'm going to go with this. I believe it's three quarter inch copper. This isn't copper tubing. This is actually for joining copper tubing. Copper tubing would probably be better, but I haven't got that. So this is a little bit, you can see it's a little bit loose, but it, it should be fine. What you want to do is you want to put a hole in it that lines up with the hole here. So you want that hole to line up. So the best way to do that is to put this on, sorry, put it on beside it, figure out wh where it's where it's going to come to at the bottom. Is it going to hit the screws on here? Or, and put that on and mark where you're going to put your hole. And we're going to drill the hole a little bit on the big side because a little bit of play in this doesn't matter. It's uh, We need the strength here. So once the hole's in there, it's going to need the strength there. So let's drill the hole. But like I said, it's not critical for the size of the hole. We want it big enough that the pin will slide through both. But it's actually better to have the hole on this a little bit bigger so that you've got a little bit of a, a little bit to play with so that you're not fighting against against it. And there we go. Here we have the actuator put together with the additional brace there and I've plugged it in. We're just going to make sure that uh, when we draw the, the actuator in it doesn't bottom out. So I'll just go out, go in, 
make sure it's not too tight. You want to make sure that that's not bottoming out because then you're going to put a load on the motor there. It should stop automatically. Okay, let's put it inside. So you can see with the uh, bottom part of the actuator in place, there's no way to get this lined up. But you can push the headrest up. Push it out a bit so that you can connect this. And bring the headrest back in so that you can get the pin in place. Only I can find the pin. the pin in place and there's the, the end where we have to put the retainer Now that it's installed, let's put it on, plug it back in, put the back on, and test it out. This is the easy part. Once you have it slid onto those rails, all you have to do is push down, and it locks into place. It's a lot harder to do when you're filming, though. And uh, once it's locked down into place, you can try to lift it. It won't come off. And what we're going to do is plug it back in. So we'll plug it back in. We don't need all of this extra cord. I, they probably come with uh, the motor with a certain amount of cord on it. I pushed it all the way out. I'm going to push some of it back in here because we don't need all that. Because it's just going to, it's just moving a little bit. And we'll plug it back in here. We need a little bit there, so we'll leave that. Close up the back, the Velcro hides the hole I made. And now let's test it out. No ripping noise. Zeus approves, doesn't wake her up. Alright, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more.